My name's Kurt Ockenfels. And I'm Nick Peebles. And we are from KNRB Team Bad Mullet Fishing Adventures. And today we are targeting bull sharks down the Logan River. Today the tackle we're using is not very heavy gear. It's a 1 to 3 or 2 to 4 kilo rod matched up with a 2,000 to 4,000 size reel. But today we have a 1 to 3 kilo rod matched up with a 3,000 size reel running braid straight to nylon to a size 3 sinker to about 40 to 50 centimetres of wire trace to a 5.0 circle hook which Kurt will show you later on in the show how to make. Now the bait we have chosen today is freshwater eel. Now these you can get anywhere in a little local creek or dam but just make sure you check with DPI the size limits and whether you're allowed to take them in the area. Now, how we're going to prepare the bait is take a nice little fillet off, a little bit bigger than a, a size of a match matchbox, like Nick is doing here. Be careful not to cut yourself. Now, how are we going to Rig the bait is simple. Skin side first through the top of the bait so it's nice and free moving and free swinging. So that hook can just swing around so when the fish grabs it, it can come and hook them in the corner of the jaw. Okay, got a bait on the hook. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to cast it out. Don't have to go very far down here. Just a little flick. Let it go down to the bottom. Flick your bail arm over. Loosen your drag off enough so when the shark picks it up, it runs quite freely, but you don't want to do it too much so your spool comes off. Now, we sit it on the ground. Now, I've got a fairly good size sinker and I've just flattened the end of it so it sits flush on the concrete. Now, what we're gonna do, pull our line out a bit, put the sinker on the concrete, and let your line just butt up against the, the, the sinker. Now, the reason why we do this is purely, if there's a lot of current, your line's just gonna get continually pulled out. Now, when a shark picks up the bait, it'll automatically flick out from underneath the sinker and the shark will start taking line. Now, what you do from here on in, pick your rod up, flick your bail arm over. Now, you can just take line very freely without feeling a thing. So, lift your rod a little bit, do your drag up a little bit. Make sure you don't get your, line, your fingers caught in the line otherwise it can pull tight and hurt you. So, keep tightening up the drag. How you test it, roll your, your spool around like that to get to the right tautness. Put your bail arm back over, wind and set the hook. So now, as you can see, we have all the rods set up. All we have to do now is wait until the bully comes along and picks up one of these baits. So, Nick is hooked up here. So let's see if we can land ourselves the first shark for the evening. And this little outfit I'm using, it's only a little light rod, one to two kilo, with a 1,000 size reel, six pound braid, to the same setup we were using before, about 40 to 50 centimeters of nylon coated wire to about a 5.0 circle hook. And when you're using this light gear too, there's no need to rush. Just take your time, as Kurt said. 
keep your drag nice and loose, just enough so you can gain your line. And it should be a good fight. Later on in the show, we'll also show you how to fill it and gut a shark ready for the table because I tell you what, these things eat particularly well. There we go, sinker come up. Brief second. This is the time where you usually lose the fish purely because you rush. Just let him do what he wants. You don't have to rush it. And when you're going to net it, just place the net in the water and let the shark go back into the net. You start swiping at it, that's when you lose your fish. Now, it should be any second now. Here comes the sinker and the trace. Wait till you start to see that sinker. But as you can see here, he's sticking into the current and using it to his advantage. Just pointing his nose down that little bit and keeping himself down in the water column. They can be quite tricky sometimes to pull up, but as Kurt said, just take your time, otherwise so, you'll lose it. Trace is up. And he's in. Now, before you go doing anything else with this fish, before you take it off the, the line, stand on his head. Now, turn away if he's squeamish, cut his tail off and this will bleed him out as you can see that blood is running out nice and freely you go cutting off the head he'll die too quickly and you'll get an ammonia taste in, in him now as you can see that circle hook is done exactly what we wanted to do right in the corner of the mouth it's not down in his gut so if you wanted to release him simple as Pulling the hook out and throwing him back in the water. And another tip guys, just be aware when you're bleeding these guys out, make sure you don't get any of the, the blood or the offal in the water. Because with these smaller bullies in these river systems here, sometimes if their blood or guts get in the water and they can smell themselves, they'll get shut down quite quickly. It all depends on the mood, but as we've found, it can happen. I run again here. This time it's on the eight pound on a one to three kilo drop shot and a two thousand five hundred Again, just take your time and just let the shark take the line whenever it wants. As you can probably hear by the, the drag, some of the runs it's doing, nice good hard screaming runs. Nice run there. Now, unfortunately, we're actually both hooked up at the moment, so it's going to be a bit more interesting. Nick's hooked up and I'm hooked up, so we'll try and do our best. Just had a nice little jump. I've just got sinker, so I'll be back with you in a couple secs. Got mine in. As you can see, this fella, nice in the corner of the jaw, like you want it to be. What we'll do is we'll take the hook here and put him back in the water. Now, go ten to next shark. Now the bully in the net. Good old double hook up. Now we're going to keep this one, so we got one each. 
as you can see here this is the one of the two that we just got circle hook doing its job once again he hasn't swallowed it it's been pinned nice in this top of the mouth there bottom of the mouth I should say sorry so we'll just pop him out same thing again just lay him on the ground tail off and let him bleed out okay we got down here about 4 30 this afternoon it's now quarter past seven so we've been down here nearly three hours we've run through some basic techniques of how you yourself the viewer at home can come down to the, this river and catch a bull shark now we've caught three tonight we released one and kept two for a feed now we're going to go home and I'm going to show you how to fill it and prepare this shark for the table. Okay, now we've come to the part of the show where I show you, the viewer at home, how to fillet a shark. First step, take off the dorsal fin. Up. Take off petrol fins. and take off, take out the anal fins. Now, secondly, at where the petrol fin bone stops, come diagonally behind that, so like that, until you hit the backbone. Take your knife, turn it 90 degree angle and fill it. Along the top of the backbone. As you can see there, it's on top. I have it cut through. Keep going. until you come out the end. Okay. You've come through the base of the tail. As you can see, it's all nice white cartilage or the backbone. Have them cut through it. Now, finish it off by coming through the belly flap. Put that on the side. Next step is to fill it the flesh off the skin. I just I, I like to nick along this line here just to square it up. Like that. So start from about an inch back on the tail, just down to the skin, like so. Then like how you did fill it off the shark, turn your knife at 90 degrees, and run your knife along. Skin back. Now, that's what you should be left with a nice skinless fillet. Now, what we do from here is a little, sometimes you can be left with just a little fine shaving of cartilage from where you've taken off the backbone. Simply just get your knife underneath it and just skim it out lightly, like that. I'll finish this a little bit off. A little of that. Oh, bit of skin. That beautiful, boneless 
course sharks don't have bones, skinless, bit of meat. Now, all we do from here is cut it into the desired pieces that you'd like to cook. Preferably, I like to cut it about thirds. And each one of these little steaks, I like to cut in half. So you end up with two fillets out of each one. I'll quickly do the rest of them. Oh, that one's all right. So there you have it. Five nice bits of flake ready for cooking. Hello and my name is Ashley and welcome to Cook Your Catch. Today we're going to be cooking some beautiful flake fillets. So after your husband's gone out and caught them, they'll cut them nicely into these pieces and we're going to cook them in a deep fryer. Don't worry, if you don't have a deep fryer, you can just use a normal pan and shallow fry. So what we're going to do today is we've got some flour and some batter. In our batter today we have some flour, some milk, I'm using lactose free because sadly I have that problem, and some salt and pepper to taste. So what you're going to do is get your nice piece of fillet, dip it in the flour, coat it nicely so it's all covered, and put it in the batter. Our batter is quite thick, we don't want it too runny otherwise it won't stick to our fillet. So we'll open our deep fryer. So what you want to do with your fillet once it's all nice and covered is just gradually drop it in. We don't want to drop it in too fast because your batter won't stick. So we'll just dip. Then gradually drop it in. So we're going to cook this until it's nice and golden brown. Um, otherwise, the other way of finding out if the flake is cooked, we don't want to eat raw fish, is getting a nice sharp knife and you stick it through it. And if it goes through with ease, then we know it's cooked. So we'll just cover this down for the moment and let it, and let it cook for a little while. Okay, so it's been cooking for about five minutes, so let's have a look. Oh, look at that, nice and golden. So we'll do our little test with our knife. Beautiful. So we just want to take this out. Here I've laid out some paper towel just to get that excess oil off. Pop it on there. Just give it a nice dab. Okay, so here we've just done a little plate of salad. You can really serve it with anything, but on a nice summer's day, a good salad can't go wrong. Oh, look at that. Cooked to perfection. Now, the great thing about flake is that there's no little bones in it. So with people with kids, you don't need to worry about that. Um, for anyone else, you don't need, you don't have to deep fry. You can bake it, grill it, cook it any way you want. And thank you for watching How to Cook My Catch. Okay, welcome to Kurt's Tackle Tips. Now, like I was saying earlier, we're here to make shark trays. Now what you need is what I like using is 40 pound nylon coated, either clear or black, seven strand trace, pair of side cutters, crimping pliers, 
6-0 circle hook, could be Gamagatsu, Ona, whichever uh, brand you prefer. Two Jinkai sleeves to suit the wire. Now I prefer Jinkai over the ones you get in the packet purely because these are a low grade copper and these are quite a, a good thickness in alloy and it bites down the wire a lot more firmer. And just your 50 pound, pound average black crane swivel. Now you can use any swivel but I prefer these. So, I like running about half a meter of wire. What you do, put your crimp on the wire, then put your swivel on. Now, conventionally, you would just do that and crimp it, but I don't trust that. What I do, I make my tag a little bit longer and I actually double it back and put it back into the crimp and push it so your tag just starts coming out the bottom there. So I left with two loops. Your top loop, I like to pull smaller and yet your bigger loop just pull it up a little bit till you get to about that size. Now yet your, your, your crimping section of your pliers just choose which one would suit your crimp best in this case it's the forward ones because these are smaller crimps. So crimp hard as you can So you ended up with a nice crimp trace. Now, do the exact same to the other end. Put the crimp on, put your hook on, back through your crimp, making that tag longer. Tag back through the crimp. So it's just poking at the bottom again and pull that top loop smaller and you want to be left with this one about that much of a loop so it's got a nice swing to it. So crimp it again like the first one so you left the crimp trace. Now what you can do is I actually sometimes put just a little bit of heat shrink on the shank of the hook just to cut down a little bit of electrolysis. You can also do that with your crimps as well just to cut down the electrolysis because the sharks can pick up currents in your steel quite easily and it can put them off from times from time to time so now you know how to make just a basic wire trace for sharks you can go to your local tackle store or BCF and buy your pre-made traces but I prefer to make your own traces so if they do pull break um, it's your own fault and not the manufacturers thanks for watching